In the past, I have talked about the Perfect Survivor game and its close misses. A Perfect Survivor game is defined as receiving no votes against you all game, and at the end, you get every juror's vote. Well, today, we are looking at the opposite end of the spectrum. The players who were constantly targeted by others, and at the end, they got the majority of the jury to vote for them, sure, but it wasn't pretty. These are the messiest Survivor winners of all time, as determined by simple math. Number five. It's hard to believe that Wendell Holland of season 13 36 Ghost Island would even make this list, but the numbers don't lie. Math is math. Despite him and Dominic running the show all game, he was still targeted in multiple episodes by Michael, though that barely makes a dent with Michael only voting for him by himself in two separate episodes. But when Wendell's buddy Dominic wins immunity in episode 11, all of a sudden, He's the target for the opposition. They are finally taking a shot at the duo running this game, which leads to... First vote, Wendell. Wendell, two votes Wendell. Chelsea. Chelsea, we're tied. Two votes Wendell, two votes Chelsea. Wendell, that's three votes Wendell. Tied again. Chelsea. 13th person voted out, the sixth member of our jury, Chelsea. So Wendell is now at five votes against him, but frankly, because so many people this season are content with sitting on their hands, Wendell is never in any real danger to be voted off, which I can't say about everyone who makes this list. So when he reaches final four, Dominic takes the approach so many others do this season by sitting on his own hands and attempting to make someone else take out Wendell for him. He does this by pitting Angela in fire against Wendell, but that doesn't work, Wendell dominates. Dom needed to do it himself. So at final tribal council, it's Wendell versus Dom. Now I know you see Laurel sitting there plotting when to take off her gloves and turn on her alliance, but taking off the gloves can make your hands cold and we wouldn't want that, would we? So when the jury goes to vote. All right, I'm gonna read the votes. What? First vote, Dominic. Wendell, Dominic, two votes Dominic. Wendell, two votes Dominic, two votes Wendell. Wendell, Dominic, tied again. Four votes Dominic, four votes Wendell. That's five votes Dominic. Wendell, for the first time in 36 seasons of Survivor, we have a tie. Here's what happens in a tie. The person who is not tied, Laurel, you become the 11th and final member of our jury, and you will cast the deciding vote. The winner of Survivor Ghost Island, Wendell. <laughs> With Dom receiving five votes to win, Wendell has 10 total against him at the end of this game. And despite how mathematically messy his game is, it's still a solid win overall. By the way, thank you for watching and liking this video. This channel is independent and patron supported. If you want to pick the videos this channel makes and support the work we do here, then Patreon is a great optional way to do so. Link in the description. Now with that, number four. Let's jump back to season 19, Samoa with Natalie White. With how much this season hones in and focuses on Russell, it can be easy to forget that he played his idol in episode nine and caused the glue members to panic and target his partner in crime, Natalie. Why do they do this? Well, they are afraid Russell might have another idol. So they're like, well, we'll knock out his alliance members till we can get him by himself. So in episode 10, they all go to vote and... First vote, Laura. Laura, two votes, Laura. Laura, that's three votes, Laura. Natalie, Natalie, two votes, Natalie. Natalie, we're tied, three votes, Laura, three votes, Natalie. Natalie, that's four votes, Laura. Laura, Natalie, we have a tie. Laura and Natalie, you will not vote. Everybody else will vote. You can only vote for Laura or Natalie. First vote, Laura, Natalie. One vote, Laura, one vote, Natalie. Natalie, two votes, Laura. Laura, that's three votes, Laura. Natalie, Laura. Ninth person voted out and the third member of our jury, Laura. That is eight votes at one tribal. 
Thankfully, Foa Foa worked their magic to cause people to flip on the revote, or Natalie may not have won this season. So with eight votes against her already, she is free and clear until the final tribal council, where Mick is pinching himself as this all-American guy you could trust your daughter to date, and Russell is explaining how his big beautiful brain is the best of all time. The jury mostly sees through both men's malarkey and realize that their arrogance and delusional entitlement, as they say, is not worth more than Natalie being a good person who is under the radar. So when the winning vote is revealed, first vote, Rattley, Russell, Natalie, Russell, Natalie, Natalie, the winner of Survivor Samoa. Russell receiving two votes to win bumps Natalie up to 10 votes against her, which is tied with Wendell, but unlike Wendell, I think she was actually in real danger to go at that one tribal council in episode 10. Number 3 Jumping even further back to season 12, Exile Island, the man who led the messy Kasai alliance alongside Suri, Aris cracks the list for one reason. Now some of you may have guessed that Terry is said reason, which is mostly true. Terry was the leader of the Lamina Alliance and pretty much starting with episode 9, Lamina just mindlessly votes Aris any chance they get. He really only gets a break when Aris wins individual immunity. However, Aris was never in any real danger to go home, not as long as his alliance had the numbers and voted for anyone but Terry while he had the super idol. So throughout the season, Aris racks up 9 votes against him. Thanks, Terry. Just one shy of Natalie and Wendell on this list, but what sends him over the edge is in the final tribal council when he faces off against fellow tribe mate Danielle DiLorenzo, where... Aris. Danielle. One vote Aris, one vote Danielle. Danielle. Aris. We're tied, two votes, two. Aris, the winner of Survivor Exile Island. Danielle's two winning votes knocks Aris up to 11 total against, making him just a tad messier mathematically than Natalie and Wendell. Number two. When you saw the title of this video, I bet your mind immediately jumped to two people. And let's talk about one of them. Season 38, Edge of Extinction, Chris Underwood. He wins, but how? That question will soon make sense as not only is he messier on paper than so many of his counterparts on this list, but in episode 3, the worst thing that can ever happen to a player in the game of Survivor takes place. First vote, Wentworth, Chris, Wentworth, Chris, we're tied, Chris, that's three votes Chris, two votes Wentworth, third person voted out of Survivor, Chris, Chris, charm spoken. Five votes to remove Chris and he's gone. There was no idol played. For those of you who can't even comprehend what you just saw because it breaks all of the rules of basic survivor, Chris was voted off, but he's still gonna win the game. How? Well, this season there's a twist. The Edge of Extinction is a place voted off players live at until they get a shot to return to the game by winning a challenge. This first shot takes place in episode six where Chris loses to Rick Devins in a close finish. So he has to sit on the edge and live with players as they are voted off one after another. It is boring. Now, mind you, these players coming here are the jury he's living with, so he gets to learn exactly what they want out of a winner. But then, in the finale, everyone gets one last shot to get back in the game, and... Chris, for the win! Chris has it! Chris has earned himself a spot back in the game! Just like that, Chris is back in. Now, of course, being a player who was voted off 10 episodes ago, no one who's still in the game thinks he has a chance to win, but this doesn't stop people from trying to vote him out, as at his first tribal council back, he tricks Lauren to play an idol for him, which negates a victorious vote, and then at the final five tribal, people realize, yeah, Chris needs to go. First vote, Chris does not count. Wow. Chris does not count. Chris does not count. 16th person voted out and the 12th member of our jury. Lauren, need to bring me your torch? Well, 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 he now has nine votes against him. But despite this, the jury still views Rick Devins as the favorite to win. Gavin and Julie are kind of just there. So when Chris wins the final four immunity challenge, he says, I don't want this. 
take it, Julie. I want to face Rick in fire, which is a necessary risky move to take out the Kingpin. Chris does end up winning this in impressive fashion, but now he has to face off against Julie, who no one really sees as the winner, frankly, and Gavin, who played a very traditional game of Survivor. So when the votes for the winner are revealed, first vote, Gavin, Chris, we're tied. One vote, Gavin, one vote, Chris. Two votes, Gavin. One vote, Chris. Chris, we're tied again. Gavin, that's three votes, Gavin. We are tied again. Gavin, that's four votes, Gavin. Chris, tied again. Chris, five votes, Chris. Chris, that's six votes, Chris. The winner of Survivor, Edge of Extinction, Chris. Those four votes for Gavin puts Chris at 13 total, and yet that is still not the most for any winner of Survivor, despite literally being voted off at one point. Wow. Number one, get ready for the Ben bombs, because in season 35, Heroes vs. Healers vs. Hustlers, Ben is one of the most chaotic post-merge games ever. With the exception of the very first Tribal Council, he didn't have a chance to receive any votes in the pre-merge. But that all changed pretty fast when he starts to play double agent in the post-merge, people are like, huh? Screw Ben, he needs to go. In episodes eight and nine, Joe and Cole throw a sole vote on Ben, starting him off with two, but it isn't until episode 11 when everyone finally goes all in on removing their nemesis. I'm gonna go ahead and play this one for myself. This is a hidden immunity idol. Any votes cast for Ben will not count. Ben does 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 not count. Twelfth person voted out the fifth member of our jury. <laughs> Lauren. Six votes negated means Ben is up to eight now, but we aren't stopping here. Nope, nope, nope. Ben actually stops anyone from voting him in the next episode when he plays his idol before anyone gets a chance to put pen to parchment, which is wild to think because he could have received a bunch of votes here and he would have, making him even messier than he already is. But this doesn't deter the group as in the finale, they give it the old college try. Ben Ball. La la la. This is a hidden immunity idol. Any votes cast for Ben will not count. First vote, Ben does not count. Ben does not count. Ben does not count. 14th person voted out and the seventh member of our jury, Mike. That is three more votes negated and Ben should have been voted off twice now, at least. He gets lucky because he loses the final four immunity challenge and then a twist that none of the players knew about ahead of time is revealed. Oh yeah, that fire making we saw Wendell and Chris do? It starts here in this season and no one knew it was coming. He gets the face off against Devin and wins. So at final tribal council, the jury basically concedes that Ben played the best game, but not quite everyone is on the same page as when Jeff reads the winner votes. First vote, Ben. Ryan. Chrissy. Chrissy. Two votes, Chrissy. Ben, we are tied again. Ben, that's three votes, Ben. The winner of Survivor, Ben. That is three more votes against Ben, making it 14 total, and by far, he is the messiest winner of all time. While Wendell, Natalie, and Aris made this list purely off of math, I think almost everyone can agree that Ben and Chris deserve to be ranked one or two, depending on how you feel about them, when it comes to the messiest winners of all time, even if you didn't look at the math. Who do you think played the messiest game of all time? Comment below and let me know. Thank you for watching and doubly thanks for liking and subscribing. See you all next time.